Hey, hello friends, thank you for joining me. My name's Dan, and I paint quite a bit. Oh man, <laughs> but I gotta tell you, it's been a challenging week. People often ask me if I get to paint every day, and uh, being a full-time painter, you know, you'd think that would be the case, right? What's the problem? You don't have a job. <laughs> well, here it is, Tuesday at 5.30, and, uh, to put it in the crude colloquial, I've been working my buns off for the last two days, and this is the first moment I've had a second to put my hands on some paintbrushes. Why? Because you have to spend a lot of time marketing, emailing, communicating, answering emails, answering phone calls, answering texts, uploading, marketing, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Okay, I know you didn't sign up to watch me to hear to watch me complain. <laughs> you, you signed up to watch me paint, so <laughs> but just want to answer that question. I am finally whew, <sighs> delighted to be painting. This is gonna be a very short broadcast. I am <clears throat> as you can see talking about how to slap some color on a crowd of people. And if you watched the very last episode, I just published uh, a, a little uh, edited video, which is unusual for me. It's a real short one, a minute long, uh, where I talk about crowds of people. And here I am doing yet another crowd of people. So this is a painting I started a couple months ago at a festival, the Whirligig Festival. Google it. Look it up. Fantastic. I've been painting at the Whirligig Festival for... 11, 12, or 13 years in a row, I honestly can't remember, but a long time. And it's been going on a couple years before I got there. Great fun, great people down in Wilson, or Wilson, North Carolina, as, <laughs> as us locals like to say. And uh, I didn't quite finish this painting during that weekend, so I am finishing it now. The reason it's taking me so long is is uh, I had to stretch the canvas. I have three canvases I'm stretching. Hey, well, let me show you the other two real quickly. Turn a light over here and just real quickly show you the uh, other two paintings that I did that weekend. This one is over is eight feet tall, almost eight feet, almost eight feet tall, and then this one is about six feet wide. So. Those are the, these are the three paintings that I did there that weekend. And I didn't quite finish the last one. I didn't quite finish this one. So now it's been stretched. My buddy Doug was here yesterday and today building the stretchers. He is well-trained. He does a good job. And it is quite a job. Don't let anybody tell you. <laughs> any different it is quite a job stretching paintings this size so thank you very much Doug for getting that done done for me and so now I can finish this one fairly quickly and then deliver it actually tomorrow tomorrow I drive on down to Wilson and finish this project so let me tell you a little bit about what my mind is doing and as you can see I've already got the people are essentially blocked in. So there's an awful lot of drawing. I like the painting quite a bit. I like the composition. I like the top of the painting quite a bit. So there's an awful lot here that I don't need to do. Um, all I have to do is put color in these figures down here. Notice the big blank spaces here. One of the easiest traps to fall into when you're painting a crowd of people is to have them like soldiers on parade evenly spaced. That's a really easy trap to fall into and not a good thing to do. So I'm happy to say that I managed to leave some very strategic gaps in this painting. And uh, again, all I have to do is color. So first of all, let's talk about my the way that I'm handling my brushes, the way that I'm handling the, the, the paint. This Putting color on a crowd of people is actually what got me started doing the fuzz layer. Now, if you're one of my regulars, 
you know all about the fuzz layer. If you're new to this channel, you're just going to have to, I'm not going to explain it in great detail, but you'll see me do it. If you follow me any length of time, you'll hear me talk. One of the last layers of, of uh, paint in my typical painting procedure is what I call the fuzz layer. And that actually started, the way you see me doing it right here, actually started by doing color on people. So first thing I will say about putting color on a crowd of people, at least my recommendation, and certainly what I do, start loose, man. Start loose. And all of a sudden here I realize I don't have any Scarlet Lake. I've got some other kind of um, red here on my palette, but I'm not very happy with it. Let me just take one second. There's two permanent roses, three permanent roses. <laughs> you know you're at the art store and you can't remember, you can't remember what uh, colors you're running out of. I need to come up with a system for remembering that. And I am not finding a Scarlet Lake, so I'm just going to have to go without it for the moment. Scarlet Lake is a... Uh, nope. Okay, Scarlet Lake is a warm, that is to say, orange-ish red so i'm just going to mix some red i think the ch the red i have here is chinese red which is a red i don't use very often be that as it may i'm taking you way down a detour that i don't need to go down so let's back up so i'm going to continue to you could say ghost in the colors scribble in the colors notice how messy i'm being i'm i'm allowing my brushes to go way outside the lines so to speak and then just maybe because I'm <laughs> maybe because I'm a little bit obsessive compulsive just a little bit I'm not OCD I'm just OC <laughs> I promise <laughs> um, maybe because I, I'm an orderly person let's put it that way I actually have a routine and again if you follow me often you'll see me do this when I'm painting a crowd of people I start with red don't know why. Just maybe it's a bad trap. I don't know. Maybe it's a bad routine, but I do. It helps me stay in order. And then I go around the color wheel, either one way or the other, from red to purple, blue, and around that way, or from red to orange to yellow, and around that way. And I go, each, each painting is different. So I've got red on my brushes right now, just to scribble in some of the color. So I'm not going to finish this process. This, that would make this video far too long. But this is the main thing I want you to see is me scribbling. Uh, we'll come back later and with lighter colors and lighter and tighter. Ooh, that's a good expression. I'm going to remember that. That's a good way to describe the trajectory of painting. You get lighter and tighter, but not too tight. tight. You'd have to put that in quotation marks because it's not very tight at all, but just a little tighter than it is. So, and I'm using a number of brushes so I don't have to clean them in between. There's uh, red. Now let's go to orange. Okay, so I'm going to go around the color wheel, the orange direction. Now, you may know that not in our culture these days, not a whole lot of people go around wearing orange. They did in the hippie days, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but but often, you know, there'll be somebody in a crowd wearing something orange-ish. So I'm going to slap just a little bit of orange. The other thing I want to point out in this, in, as I'm slapping color on a crowd of people, is that these people back here, you see, are catching some sunlight. Not all, not necessarily all the way down to their feet, right? Their feet might be in shadow but the top part of the person is in light. These people down here are all in shadow, so they're going to stay dark. They're going to have color on them, but it'll be color in shade, so very much darker, as you see them already happening. I'm going to go ahead now on around. I'm done with the orange. Let's go around to yellow. Again, not a lot of people, unless they're wearing a uniform of some kind or, you know, the festival sometimes will order yellow T-shirts for all of its workers, that kind of thing. So sometimes people do, sh do show up in ye yellow clothing, but again, not very many. That's enough. Let's continue on to green. I'm not even cleaning my brush. 
So I have yellow and green, which means I should be coming up with a, a fairly warm spring green-ish kind of color, right? And again, just ghosting it on still at this point. I'm not to the point of lighter and tighter. I'm still, I think this person, let me, let me zoom in here for just a second. So just in the last few minutes, I've put a, some dirty orange, dirty orange, even more transparent that is, comes out almost a perfect brown there. And down here is blue. And now I've got, uh, again, I'll call it a dirty spring green on my brushes. And I find often that layering paints um, across temperature is very effective. So just a minute ago, this person was wearing orange and brown. Now I just put a warm green, so I barely crossed the temperature uh, barrier, but it's cooler than it was. So again, crossing a, the color, the temperature barrier is very effective. Let me find somewhere else where I can do this. Again, I've got green on my brushes. Um, which person here would look good in green? Somebody way over here. Am I even on the camera? I think I am. So that, that character just went from dark purple to medium dark green. I'm gonna do some green right there. Um, it is very hard for human beings to do random chaos of any kind. And if we're not careful, we'll arrange all the colors like red here, 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 orange, yellow, Green, yeah, every, equal, so <laughs> I consciously try to do things like, well, let's put two people right next to each other that are both wearing green. I try to do that on purpose because I know the tendency is not to do that. Okay, now I'm picking up some phthalo blue and again, some a little bit more titanium white. So now I have a, again, sort of a dirty bluish green on my brushes. And it's, that would be a really good color for bottom half of somebody down here in the shade. So there we go. And of course, painting with two hands is a great advantage when it comes to staying loose. And when it comes to painting in a hurry, you can paint faster. Um, and painting with the long handled brushes, of course, also. So yeah, get yourself, I have two different brands of long handled. This is made by Rosemary Brush Company. Excellent brush company. This is made by Jewel Plain Air, Creative Mark. Good economy brush, not expensive at all. Okay, continuing around the color wheel then. Now I'm going to, without cleaning my brush, I'm going straight to some ultramarine blue. Tiny bit of liquid there, just, to, just so that my paint flows a little bit easier. And of course, dries fast. Okay, so now I've got, here's... This close-up person, I haven't done any color on them yet other than the purple that was there from the underpainting. And I don't, I certainly want some of that purple to show through. So now I've just done green on top of purple. That's a, that's a pretty good example of cross temperature. And this person is orange and I've just done a dark green. Are you getting this principle? Layering, I'm doing, and this is a characteristic of the fuzz layer. It's all translucent. There's no opaque in the fuzz layer. As I progress in coloring these people, little by little by little, I'll get thicker paint, more opaque, and it'll be lighter colors, lighter and slightly tighter, okay? Just a little bit more realistic as I move along. But I, I move toward realism very slowly. Okay, where was I? I'm going around the color wheel to, I, all the way to blue-green. I'm going to switch brushes now and do just a little bit of a more of a pure blue on some of these figures. Now, I've already done some blue, so I don't need to do a whole lot more. That, oh, let's go way over here. <laughs> Painting a canvas this big is, of course, a bit of a challenge. Because your studio is not big enough to reach both ends of the canvas. <laughs> I like my studio. 
but right at the moment, it could be about four feet wider. <laughs> and, uh, I'll make do though. I'm not, I'm not about to start moving furniture around today just for that. Blue. What color do people wear the most on their legs? <laughs> That's an easy question. Every American knows, man. The ubiquitous blue jeans. So there's more blue below the waist, far and away, than any other color. What's second, by the way? Answer is black. Just in case you ever want to know. That's what color people wear the most. Um, and in that regard, my crowds of people are not realistic, usually because I don't want a lot of black. I used to do a lot of black, and then I don't anymore. Now I do color. Okay, uh, now just a little bit of purple, and, and I will finish the color wheel loop. Does that make sense? I started with red. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, green, blue, and now purple, and then I'm all the way back to red. So I've, I've gone around the color wheel one time, just ghosting in very loosely, little bits of color. Now I'll let, I'll, I'll, we'll start going into the next layer. And again, I'll end this video so it stays nice and short. <sighs> At some point, usually, and I'm trying to decide, should I do it right now? Yeah, I will. So I've just finished the color wheel. At some point, normally, I take a break and I say, okay, let's do some flesh tones. And that's what I'm going to do right now. So I'm picking up the brushes that had red on them and just mixing them, mixing a whole bunch of uh, stuff that was already here on my palette because I'm after a, a fairly dull brown, right? So I don't have to waste paint mixing up new colors. I just mix uh, uh, what's already on the palette. Now, at this point, I have to think carefully about which people are coming toward me and which people are going away from me. Typically in America, on the right side of the street, just the way we drive, more people over here will be going away from us and more people over here will be coming toward us. So people that are going away from us, the back of their head, because most people's hair, too much information, most people's hair is darker than their skin. Blondes, of course, the exception to that rule. But I don't know what the percentage of blondes is in the general population, but it's definitely a minority. So again, if people are going away from me, their head will be dark. If people are coming toward me, their head will be light because it's their face that we're seeing. Uh, real simply, how much detail do you, should you put on a, on a crowd of people? Now, there's a lot of different ways to do this, but I'm not unusual in this regard. I draw the line at facial features. In other words, no, no eyes, mouth, nose. Sometimes, sometimes just as much as a horizontal stroke across their face somewhere that has the suggestion of eyes or sunglasses or maybe the shadow under a nose, but usually that's it. I find if you start messing around with facial features, it starts looking cartoony really quickly. And that's generally not what I'm after. Now here's some people that we, we're seeing the back of their arms here. These two people are going away from us. I, I think that's clear and I'm thinking this is a woman and I think this is a man. So I'm gonna give him, we can see the back of his neck. Same thing here, I think that's a woman and I think this is a man. Now, while I'm doing skin tones, by the way, I usually start with darker skin tones and then, like the clothing, graduate to white, get lighter and tighter. And then it's in the getting light stage that I'm, that I'm careful to leave some faces, some skin tones in the darker range so that I get a variety, the hint of a ver variety of, uh, races and skin tones. Of course, so I just want to reflect the reality, and in this case, the reality of the crowd at the Whirly Gig Festival in Wilton, North Carolina. 
is distinctly uh, multiracial. So very appropriate that I just don't, as a white person, don't slip into accidentally doing too many light-skinned people just because I'm light-skinned. See, so that's not too hard to remember. I, I'm, I do that a lot. That's enough skin tone for now. Let's do just a little bit more of... I've got two directions to go. I'll tell you where I'm thinking. Either, either do another round the color wheel, lighter red, lighter orange, lighter yellow, lighter green, just like I did a little while ago, but those were fairly muted and dark. I would go around the second time lighter. Either that or at some point here, I introduce a bunch of intentional white and gray. That sounds like more fun for you guys watching. So let me, let me stop there and switch gears slightly. Now let's, and this will make, this will be quite a bit more realistic as far as a crowd of people goes, because at least in America, a lot of people tend to wear uh, light or white clothing all year long it seems so i'm mixing up a dirty white here that is picking up just a tiny bit of the flesh tone that was there a little bit of the yellow ochre and that's too warm so i'm going to pick up a little blue i want so it's, i'm actually making a get dirty white or very very pale gray and miss going back and forth and back and forth till I get just the temperature I want. And just the lightness, brightness, the, the value that I want. Okay, there we go. So now, again, this, I, I, this is comparable to the colors I did a while ago. This is a very dirty white or dirty gray. Um, I'll come back later and do lighter gray lighter and tighter got it i'm still definitely in the uh in the fuzz layer stage and again these people here are going to be in the sunlight i'm going to go ahead and add some do the same color just a lighter version of it and again so now i'm getting a little bit tighter just a little bit there's so many ways to paint people. I see a number of other painters that do just a spectacular job of doing crowds of people. Some of my f favorite cityscape painters are Jeremy Mann out in San Francisco. Brilliant young artist. And he does his people quite differently from me. Another, one of my favorites, you hear me mention periodically, is Tibor Nagy in uh -oh, Lithuania, Eastern Europe. Oh, I'm sorry. Not to be confused with the Tibor Nagy Gallery. That always surprises me. There's two things called Tibor Nagy. <laughs> um, so there's a little bit more light. Do you see that? Okay, now I'm ready to go in, uh, to my next layer of red. And then I'm going to let you guys go, or I'm, I might take a break and then finish, bro finish the broadcast later. So I'm mixing up now a, a lighter, more intense red and a lighter red than what I used earlier. It has quite a bit of orange in it. And the, where I'm thinking of putting this color is where there's already some red, for the most part. Does that make sense? I'm looking where there's already little smudges of red. You can see, now here's the danger. Do you see how evenly spaced those are? That's, that's bad. <laughs> Glad I caught that. So I want to, I'll, I'm going to add another dab of red there. So I'm breaking up the regularity of that. So easy for human beings to do that. And by the way, you may ask, well, where's my photograph? Where's my reference? Um, I basically don't need reference for this stage, but I actually went in my and my cameras and my computer looking for the photograph and for some reason I don't understand it is not there so that's a bit of a mystery 
because it should be in Google Photos. Okay, so do you see the little bits of red that I added there? Now let's do the same thing with orange, right? I'm gonna go around the color wheel the same way I did just a little while ago, but this time, again, I'm adding lighter, brighter, a little more intense orange and a little bit more precise, not much. I want it to look almost like a shimmering mass of human beings. I, 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 I want you to be able to, in a sense, to squint and see that this is a crowd of people. If you start looking at them I, from a distance, I want it to look like people. And when you start examining it up close, it becomes just a mass of brush strokes. In my opinion, that's good painting. That's what I'm aiming for. I'm not always as good as, of course, ever as good as I want to be, but that is in fact uh, my ideal and the painters I love best do that, do that kind of thing fairly well. I'm going to clean these brushes off and I think I can go straight to yellow, but that's a good place for me to stop. You see the process now. So I'll, again, I'll be doing this a couple of times, coming back with an even brighter, lighter red and touching fewer areas, orange, yellow, again, around the color wheel, and then finally wrap, ending up with some very light and then just perhaps a few tiny bit of dark details. I don't know for sure, we'll find out. But as you can see, I want this part of the crowd to appear as though they're being hit by the, the uh, sunlight, the sun that is setting behind us. These people are in the shade and they're all just a happy shimmer of movement. <laughs> That's my story. I'm sticking with it. Thanks for watching. Now, let me see if any comments are here. Thank you. Hey, Mark, one of my regulars. Good to see from you. Thank you. Happy New Year to you and to David as well. Okay, David says I should look at my painting in a mirror and I bet he's right. <laughs> okay, the perspective from the back building three windows seem bad compared of the blue tent at the top. Uh, back three windows. Blue tent top. I will look at it, David. Thanks for the tip. Let me, let me bring it down a little bit. So I'll do that while I'm off camera, you guys. And uh, make sure the perspective looks good in your mirror. And uh, I'll come back and wrap up this broadcast in, in a little while uh, when I'm finishing this process. Thanks, guys, for watching. Well, hello, Donna Lobes. <laughs> You're probably not still on anymore, but <laughs> I just saw your comment just now. Thank you for that. Um, so I am finishing up here. Just a few touches. At the moment, I have some dark, transparent stuff. Uh, kind of a neutral, neutral, dark, warm gray. Um, and in here, you can see basically what I've done since we last talked, which I described earlier as lighter and tighter. <laughs> now, again, tight, really, really have to put in quotation marks because not many people would call this tight in any regard whatsoever. In fact, when I zoom you guys in like this, you, you almost have a hard time seeing this as a crowd of people. Am I right? But when I zoom out like that, then suddenly I said, oh, yeah, that's a crowd of people. I, I recognize any, that anywhere. <laughs> um, uh, whoops. <clears throat> Got a dark mark right there. Can't keep, can't let that stay. Um, I actually did in the middle of the process, since, since I, you left me, um, I did a little bit of pencil, a little bit of scratching here and there, a little bit of liney, liney stuff. Uh, I added some dark values here as if they were shadows of these canopies down there. And that allowed me to do one very particular trick, which is in here, make the people light bright against a dark background whereas in most of the rest of the painting 
the people are dark against a light background. That is, for what it's worth, just a little trick that I like to do in my crowds of people. Let me, let me repeat that. What is it I like to do? I like to have part of the crowd of people be light against a dark background and other parts of the crowd be dark against a light background. I like that interplay and if you can, if I can cause there to be actually a transition from one to the other without being jarring. I've got a pencil again here. I like that. I like that quite a bit. So again, uh, there's so many ways to, to paint. <laughs> there's so many ways to paint, period. And there's so many ways to paint figures. And there's so many ways to paint crowds. This is just one way. Even my style varies a little bit from painting to painting. I've done some looser than this and certainly some tighter. But I think that looks like a crowd of people. Okay, last thing I'm going to do and just wrap up here is now I'm mixing up very, very, very light, off-white, warm white, just see if there's any, any sparkle at all that is needed in here. I added just a hint of a stripe down the center of the street a little while ago, and yeah, I guess that's all right. I was debating taking it out, but I think it's all right. And as you can see, my, my sparkle is concentrated to this area. I also did a little bit of work on this banner, in the sky, in the trees, trees here, this tree. Oh, David, thank, uh, thank you. Um, right at the end of my first half of my broadcast, um, my friend David thought there was something wrong with these three windows. <clears throat> he suggested I look with the mirror, and I did, actually. I did look with the mirror. I took a picture with my phone and then edited the photograph in my phone, flopped it horizontally, right? Which is the same as a mirror image. And then, indeed, I did see what you were talking about. It wasn't, it wasn't that my perspective was off. It was that the, in the looseness of the rendering, it, these lines looked wrong. So thank you, David. Appreciate it. Good word. Good, good, good call. And it helped me, it helped me fix that. It was sort of like a, it was sort of like a, uh, what's a visual, uh, a visual illusion, optical illusion, sort of. Uh, but uh, th those count, <laughs> right? When, if something looks wrong, it is, whether it's wrong or not. And it looked wrong, so it was. So kudos. Thank you, David, pretty much, very much. Okay, I think I'm just fiddling now. So it's time for me to quit. So that's me putting crowd on putting crowd on a color. <laughs> putting color on a crowd. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your chats and comments. Let's see if there's anything else. Um, nope, not in the last couple of minutes. So I'll bid you a fond adieu. Thank you for leaving comments. Thank you for subscribing. I hope to see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.